mercy. Oh gosh. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and this video. Um, welcome to my bookish corner. That's what I'm gonna call this, my bookish corner. Because really and truthfully, like I'm always sitting and I wanted to give different angles, and so I thought this would be cute. Also, I'm quite comfortable here. I mean, I feel a bit it looks more squashed than I feel, but yeah, let's just get into it. Today I'm gonna do the mid-year freak out tag, mainly because I've disappeared obviously from my channel for a long time and so therefore there was lots of reading that I didn't update you guys on I mean there was a lot of things that I didn't read because I was also in a reading slump so it wasn't as much as it would have been like for example how much I've read in July I've read loads in July but like you know it's still quite a few books so I thought the mid-year freak out tag would be good to update you however it is no longer the middle of the year okay we're coming we are fast fastly approaching um august so how about we just call it a sometime in the year freak out tag instead okay so yeah let's just get into it like let's not diddle daddle doodle any further let's just zoom into it question number one is what is your favorite book of the year so far and i'm gonna split this into two sections um one being fiction and non-fiction because i do read a lot of non-fiction and so I don't feel like it's necessarily fair to rank them in the same way. For fiction, my favourite book that I read this year is Death in Hills by Kitty Murphy. Now, I, could, I couldn't even believe that I read this this year. That's how much I loved it and how much it's so cemented in my head as a favourite that I thought, oh, I must, I've, I must have read this ages ago because I just love it so much. It's just standard, like it's just a standard favourite. But I did, in fact, read it this year. So let me tell you what it's about. So this book follows Fee McHenry and her best friend, Robin. And it follows Robin's drag debut as maybe. And Fee is anxious and supportive because one thing she does is she loves Robin. She loves Robin and she also loves maybe. But maybe's debut performance is hijacked by a fellow queen, Eve. And obviously, shit hits the fan. <laughs> But when Eve is found murdered later on, it's giving, it's giving hinky, it's giving what happened. Um, and so obviously, she finds herself, you know, she has to solve it. And not only does she have to solve it because of it's her best friend is involved, but also because of the lack of the police effort in trying to solve these queens' murder. Oh my gosh, I absolutely loved it. Like, it was just, it's just so good. Like, I don't even know how to describe how good this is. Like, okay. Oh, there's just so many layers. <laughs> I'm just gushing because I'm trying to think logically where to start with this book. So first things first, I just love the entire culture in this book in terms of like the drag queen culture in this book. It's just, it's just, it feels like found family. Like there's such a found family at Trash, which is the name of the club. I don't know if I mentioned it before. There's a, such a found family element and each of them are such characters and yet they, and they bicker, but they love each other so strongly and it's just so good and then obviously i love the murder mystery element which is why i picked it up and that is done so well like i just love the way that i spotted and i love the way that fee finds herself involved um because it feels so real um and it doesn't feel like one of those mysteries where you're like why are you getting involved like stay out of it and i think the reason why i love this book so much is because not only is the mystery popping and not only is the character work popping but also the commentary alongside it in terms of society and how society views the queer community in particular highlighting the drag community yeah it was just amazing it was so nuanced it was funny that was one another thing it was funny it was funny and it was so interesting actually to see this book through the lens of fee because that's who our main character is our main character is fee and it's very interesting because fee herself isn't a drag queen she is just a best friend of robin and it was very interesting because you almost want it to be written in a way like this is just weird play where you're like well if this is about the drag community you want one of the queens to be the protagonist of their own story but by having it be fee you get an interesting perspective and i don't want to go in too much into how and why but yeah and also i just heavily related to fee in a way almost and considering like you know i'm not necessarily in the same position like i'm not from dublin like there's so many things that are different between me and fee but 
I really related to her in a certain sense in like how much she loves her best friends I I just think that was totally relatable and I think this is a book that really does champion friendship and how important friendships can be amazing uh, amazing 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 and so my best non-fiction is another amazing 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 book and that is what my bones know by I can't remember the author's name right now and I haven't written it down. Yeah, I absolutely love this book too. So this is a memoir um, specifically focusing in, in on a complex PTSD. So it starts off with the author. She is going to her therapist and she's been visiting this therapist for a long time because she had a very complex childhood full of like abuse and stuff from her parents. And despite having gone to this therapist for years um, and feeling very established in their relationship, one day her therapist just kind of drops in her eyes in the author's eyes out of the blue that she has complex ptsd and that kind of rocks her world away because she's like what like what do you mean and so then it kind of follows her on this journey to kind of understand not only complex ptsd more but also herself and how that relates to her and just lots of things and basically it's a memoir and it's just so good like it's so good it was harrowing at parts to hear about her past and like the things that she went to went through but I also I loved the race element in this as well because the author is Asian American I, and so hearing those conversations of like trauma and um generational trauma and all of those things that was in this book I loved that I loved that element so much um and how you know sometimes marginalized communities can pass along those traumas and stuff like that i don't know i just love that bit so much but then also finding out more about complex ptsd i absolutely love that because personally i knew very little about it going into it and like obviously this isn't a non-fiction educational book so it's not like okay this is complex ptsd da -da 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 -da, but it does inform you quite a lot as because she's learning we're learning as well do you get what i mean like as she learns we learn and i listened to the audiobook and the audiobook was so good there was um a certain bit where it's literally the audios that she had from her real life and it's placed into the audiobook i don't know if that makes sense so she had recorded some of her sessions and so those recorded sessions are in the audiobook and that was just so so powerful i just love that so much and so yeah i absolutely love this book i loved it so 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 much um and it was one of the best non-fictions that i read and it's a memoir and previous to this year i hadn't really read that much memoirs but this one hands down was phenomenal phenomenal Question number two is the best sequel you've read this year. And I actually haven't read that many sequels. I don't know what happened this year. But as I said, like, I didn't read much this year. And I couldn't force myself to read anything. And for some reason, new, exciting, shiny things was what was dragging me. So I started a lot of series this year. But I haven't continued nor finished very many. So I don't have very many to choose from. But I shall tell you about some of the ones that I have. So of the ones that I just continued, I didn't start it this year, um, I just continued. The best is Spy X Family. Now, I enjoy this series. It's not an absolute favourite, but every time I read it, it, as I'm reading it, it makes me immensely happy. It's just that we're, as time passes, I'm like, yeah, it's, it's a good series, but it's not something that I'm going to scream and shout about. It's a manga series and it follows this man and he's a spy this man he's a spy and he gets an assignment where he has to kind of like infiltrate the school and so in order to infiltrate the school he's like okay i need to have more of a nuclear family unit so i don't look so suspicious so he needs a wife and a kid and so he adopts a kid from an orphan an orphanage sorry and he meets this woman and he marries this woman but the twist is he's a spy and he's keeping that from the, his family um but also the woman that he's married she's an assassin okay so she's keeping that from him and the kid the kid that he has adopted is a psychic so she can read minds she is the only one who knows the full dynamics of the family and we watch as the dad is trying to keep his spiders from the family the mom is trying to keep her assassin life from the family and the daughter is just like oh my gosh oh my gosh like just such comic relief it's so good it is so fun and it is so funny and it's cute as well i mean you have to kind of take it surface level because if you think any deeper than what it is you're thinking about the trauma that this is having on the kid to be able to read their parents minds and etc etc and to be able to like your parents didn't actually want you for wanting sake they just wanted you for their jobs etc etc or to look normal like let's not go into that trauma that that would bring um and let's just look at it on the surface level which is just a very cute graphic novel 
more and that's why i enjoy it for another series that i like started and finished this year so that's how much i enjoyed it is the lizzie gardner series this kind of came out of nowhere it was a kindle unlimited series and as i said i just need this to fly through and it's to read and listen along and i love that format so much so i started this series because it was there and i was like okay i'm vaguely interested and i loved it so much i proceeded to binge the entire series book one to six one after the other just one after the other and yeah i loved it and i loved all of them equally pretty much so what can i say it follows this woman named lizzie gardner and in the start we find out that when she was younger she was kidnapped she was abducted by a serial killer yeah right? she was abducted by a serial killer and so years later she's become a pi and she also trains um young women in like self-defense and that's what she does for her career she t tells them how to be safe and then one day things start happening that are similar to what happened to her and then she has to like get involved i believe that's the first one like it's really hard especially when you binge a series all in one to try and like differentiate the different books in your brain because it's just like one complete story arc and that's one thing i'll say about this series is that it really was a story arc it evolved it changed the, they are not the same people in book one that they are by the end and that is a marker of a successful series to me it didn't drag out unnecessarily in my opinion like it wrapped up at a good time like it was enough books but also it wasn't just long for long sake saying that i could absolutely read more from this series when it finished when i got to book six i was like where's the, where's the next one but where's the next one but like how am i supposed to read if i don't have the next book in this series but like i want to know what happens next and and that was another thing the fact that it doesn't matter what happened i just kept wanting to come back to lizzie gardner and see what was happening in her life Sure, that was a really good series. Like, I just wanted to, to come back. Like, I didn't actually care. I was just like, okay, but I just want to know more about Lizzie Gardner and, like, the entire cast. So the character work was just A1. The plot was plotting because, as I said, I wasn't reading. So for the fact that for it to grip me and I was actually reading them, like, in a day or in a couple days maximum shows you how good this series was. So I would highly recommend. The next question is hard for me. Like, it's very hard for me because yeah i have an i don't know new releases and me we've been beefing i started a digital journal this year and i've been really enjoying it and the one thing that i've stayed consistent on is updating the new releases that month in the journal so i have just collated so many new releases per month that i'm interested in but obviously i haven't been reading them so i will show you all of the digital journal spreads from the beginning of the year and just know that i haven't read the majority of them okay the majority of these new releases have not been read so any one of these pretty much i'm still interested in so in january particularly ones that i want to get to is the filling donovan obviously because that's a that's a continuation in a series that i've already started another one is the black queen that premise sounds really interesting to me and i want to read it even though i haven't heard the best things for february ripples in time again continuing a series that i absolutely love but also come home safe sounds very interesting or looks very interesting to me in march vera wong because look i have it right here i've got the book so i would like to finish it please but also my dear henry sounds amazing as well as dear medusa once of future sex and this month is the one month where i want to read almost everything on this list in april chang gang all stars i'm not sure if it was april or may but anyway happy place and again another book that i own physically yours truly i need to read as well as sisters of the lost nation throwback quite a few things may not as many i want to read drowning and i also want to read yellow face in june you're not supposed to die tonight that is a highly anticipated read for me lots of people read it in summer ween as well as ride or die so lots of dying in july i want to read these vicious games business or pleasure i have been absolutely dying dying gagging to read <laughs> okay oh, gagging literally <laughs> um anyway back to the books or a uh, guide to the dark that sounds interesting and the cover's beautiful so my biggest surprise of the year are books that i liked and i liked a lot okay so i've got two um i'll try and talk briefly about them number one is a hangman's daughter this is a translated from the german and i really enjoyed it it's a historical mystery book and i read it specifically because i was trying to do like the reading across the world prompt and this is obviously translated from german it's german and i really enjoyed it as i i didn't really know much about it i just picked it up again it was on kindle sure translated to which language sorry anyway as i was saying before i was rudely interrupted by siri yeah i didn't know much about it it was on kindle and it was on the read along thing as well i think 
and i really enjoyed it i really enjoyed it it was a historical mystery and i do tend to like historical mysteries so what can i expect it was i can't remember the exact era but yeah and then it follows this family gosh this is really testing my memory because it was a while ago but it follows this family who are the executioners of the town because it's a very small town living and then something happens there's a murder and then the executioner's family have to try and solve it i don't know i'll put the synopsis on the screen because i'm trying to go through these ones quickly the next one is also taylor tinker school mom spy so i don't know why i picked this up i think i just saw it and i was like okay okay and i really enjoyed it no because i really did it's basically about this mom and she's just a regular regular woman like i'm just a regular i want to say i don't want to say suppressed but like you know what i mean like very much i'm just here looking after the kids looking after my husband like house mom but like i don't have anything for myself like 100% of my soul is just being pushed into this family like that's what she's giving right but the twist is the twist shock horror is is that she used to be a spy okay but she's given up her spy life to become this this mom just this regular Declan mom but then something happens and she has to like come out of retirement and it's following her being a school mom um but also her being a spy and I really enjoyed it like it didn't like okay there were many like cliche topics in this but they were handled well like I feel like they were handled well and like it didn't like scrimp on the spyness like she was really trying to run around and I enjoyed that I enjoyed that it wasn't just like oh she's a spy like give her some paperwork like I enjoyed that I wanted the hijinks I think also at the time that I was reading this I needed like fast paced sort of plotty books and this was a fast paced plotty book and yeah I just enjoyed it and because I just picked it up and I just thought, okay, gosh, it's going to be a bit cliche. Like, I thought it was just going to be too much, like, go, you can still be yourself after you've had kids. And it did be like that, but it wasn't too much for me. And so I really enjoyed it. Again, I'm going to go for two for the next one for biggest disappointment. These two, these two are hard. These two are hard for me because I, I wanted something for them. And that's what the disappointment is. The disappointment is I had hopes for these and then they didn't quite reach up to my high hopes so the first one is a million to one so this was a anticipated release for me this was pitched to me as titanic meets oceans eight okay so it's about a heist that takes place on the titanic and it was diverse as well so i had like you know i don't know like diverse characters it's YA, and i read it and it was just meh it was just meh like i don't know what to tell you like there was nothing bad about it like, it wasn't terrible they didn't do anything that offended me it was just meh and like considering it was uh anticipated release i was just like we could do better we could do better and yeah like it was just meh um and i don't wanna and it's hard for me like is it me or is it this book and i think it's the book i think the book is just meh i mean i'm not the ace category anymore but i do think it was the book i just think the book was meh like the book didn't break any boundaries it was unrealistic that is what i remember the most about it was just unrealistic and like i mean I guess like how realistic can you be when you're setting it on the Titanic and it's like a heist on the Titanic but like come on like let's try a bit you know what I mean like I don't know and we also have Final Girls by Meryl Grant I don't know I absolutely love Meryl Grant and I'm looking down because I've got the book from her give me one sec where is it oh it's right here it's literally right here um Into the Drowning Deep I absolutely love this book by Meryl Grant it's one of my favorite books of all time like of all time I'm gonna give you Into the Drowning Deep by Meryl Grant amazing and so the so Final Girls is it's another sci-fi plot it's shunan Maguire, by the way mirror grant and so when i saw like the plot for final girls and saw that it was like i don't know it was just something it was short it's basically about like this sci-fi thing where you can where it's kind of like hypnosis therapy and re re regression therapy is that what it is um where basically they create this entire scenario um and that will solve you from whatever you want to be solved so like if you are trying to bond with your sister who you've hated for your entire life after you've gone through this experience you will end up loving each other and i say experience because like they put you into this coma they're pumping you full of drugs um and you believe it like because of the drugs and because of everything the coma like it's almost like changing your entire brain chemistry like you believe this happened to you whilst you're in the coma you're like 100 percent believing it um and it's only like they have to specially extract you from it otherwise you will forever be changed like you will forever think that that is what has happened like this has happened to me like what do you mean like you know and also it's kind of a bit of another sci-fi thing because like it's basically like you're dreaming it's basically you're dreaming in this coma but they can watch what you're dreaming on, on a screen and so they're like this is like brand new like we've never been able to have this technology before where we can see people's dreams right 
but anyway something goes wrong someone hijacks it and then it's like a final girl slash sharp moment and so it sounds interesting but really and truthfully like it just weren't it like it was just it was just mad it was just mad like i couldn't keep the characters separate in my head like the slasher was fine but like i would have i like they could, all could have died they all could have died really and truthfully and like was it really making much sense no it was like okay fine it made sense but like it didn't aim to make more sense than sense. Do you know what I mean? No, you don't know what I mean, because that doesn't make sense. It made sense on like a very, but it was very surface level. Like, it was just like, okay, okay, like, that doesn't make sense, but like, okay, do you know what I mean? So it was a bit, it was a bit, it was a bit sticky. Like, I don't know what to do with that. So, Meryl Grant failed me, unfortunately. I thought Meryl Grant could be here, but like, I also have another book by Meryl Grant. Here we go Parasite, which I've DNF, like, I got 50% of the way, and I was just like, why am I putting my way through this? I also have another book by Meryl Grant. Um, is, is hidden i can't find it right now and yeah we'll have to see we'll have to see about Meryl Grant me and Meryl Grant we're rocky the next question is newest fictional crush and usually i'll be like to you guys i don't i don't get fictional crushes and that's true i don't usually get fictional crushes and thank goodness for my most recent read so if i'd filmed this when i was supposed to film this you wouldn't be getting this there'll be no answer to this but i have an answer now okay and it is michael from the list okay he is sexy okay i'm really sorry i'm really sorry he's sexy i don't know what to tell you and someone wants to tell you you could get it like it is what it is so it follows ola this high profile journalist and she's marrying the love of her life michael and they are as i said she's a high high level journalist michael he's like a podcast star he's like very much into like that sort of world like social media podcasting world and so he's kind of famous and together they are the it couple they are the dark skin black british it couple like they are hashtag couple goals and ola the main character usually she's very she's like a feminist writer specifically like she's a journalist but she's a feminist writer and she's chronically online like everybody in this book is chronically online and at the start of the book their a list is published on twitter and usually ola would be the first one up there like retweeting it like oh my god yes like i'm in support of these women however ola ola's fiance michael he's on the list did i mention they're getting married they're getting married um he's on the list um and so it's like this whole thing about like did he do what he's being accused of like is ola gonna stay will she go but when i one thing i can tell you michael mm, like listen 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 is michael my husband like could i marry michael no i said like you know there's just so many problems in this book like i can't like in good faith put myself into ola's positions because that's basically what i'll be doing i'll basically be like okay i'm gonna become ola and have to decide and i don't want to do that i don't want to be in ola's position but you're asking me a fictional crush and it's michael like just the way he's described i don't know what to tell you i don't know what to tell you i'll put it on the screen like okay it's giving it's giving okay i don't know I don't know. There's nothing else to say. There's nothing else to say. But apart from like, if you want to know my type, yeah, Michael. There we go. Aesthetically, sorry, I should say my type aesthetically. Although I don't really have a type, so you know, it's a bit hard. But he he definitely fits into it. Whatever whatever it is, he fits into a section of it. Okay. And then the next question is similar about characters, like your new favorite character. And similarly, like I like characters. I do, I do but do i love characters i don't know and i don't want to repeat i don't know if you've noticed i'm giving you different books for each of these questions um and so i'm not trying to repeat because if i was going to repeat it would be fee it would be fee fee mckinnery i love her so much okay me and fee we're best dbs so i was thinking like what actually though is my favorite character of one of the books i've read this year and where is it where is it where is it here we are it's gonna have to be yeah 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 what is this this is the hunger games i'm so sorry it's not a new character. It's not a new character. I can't. I can't. Uh, it is just Peter. Okay? Peter is just forever, 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 forever Peter. I'm a Peter stan and I always will be, okay? There's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can say. Peter is just my favourite. I mean, I love Katniss. And this is the thing. Like, I reread it this year. Okay? There's going to be a whole vlog about it. You know, it's coming out eventually. It's coming out eventually. I reread The Hunger Games this year. And... I've always loved Katniss, like, you know, as in, we've always, we've, we've, we've been knowing Katniss is flawed, so it's not like I loved her thinking she's an unflawed character, no, I always loved her, and, but I always loved Peter, but this read, this read round, I'm just like, no, Peter is just, like, if I had to marry someone, there you go, talking about marriage, Peter, Peter is just pure marriage material, and the reason why I love Peter so much, I haven't even told you what it's about, but really, truthfully, if you don't know what Hunger Games is about, I, I can't help you on that, in that arena, 
but I'm just Peter, this read round, I just have to say, you you know, don't simplify him, okay? And I feel like maybe that was in the movie as well. I haven't rewatched the movie, so I'll have to rewatch it. But I feel like the movie made him almost two dimensional. Peter is smart, okay? Peter is a smart boy, yeah? He's got his head screwed on. Like, he is. He's no one's favourite to win the Hunger Games, but he's a smart boy. Like, the way he uses his words, he should be a politician. The way he uses his words, honestly, honestly, he's he's also a cinema role. He's a cinema role, but he's got back. He's a cinema role with back. And that is one thing that I love. I don't love anyone who's too sunshine and, like, they don't have anything else to him. He's got a bit of an edge. He's got a bit of an edge. He's like, at the appropriate times, though. That is the thing. At the appropriate times and in the appropriate way, Peter, Peter, Peter can do what he needs to do, okay? He can, he can gaslight and manipulate the rest of them, okay? And I love that for him. Like, he's not just a uh, cinema mom. Um, but he's also like, I've always loved you. And that is just... <sighs> he just has my heart. So, it's not a new character. It's not a new favourite. But it's the truth. Um, and I'm sticking... And I'm a stand beside him. I'm a stand beside him, Okay. A book that made me cry this year. Again, usually I don't really cry at books like that. I'm just not, I just, I don't know. To be honest, let me be real. Let me be 100% real. I don't like, I don't like reading sad books, okay? I don't like watching sad movies. I don't, it's not fun for me. It's not fun for me. I read for escapism, for entertainment. It's not giving escapism or entertainment if I'm crying. If I'm sobbing, tears are leaving my eyes. How is that, how is that fun? How is that fun? How is that fun? You know what I mean? Like, I want joy joy and peace and positivity you know so that is why i don't usually quiet books because i actively avoid it like i'm running the other way however there was a book that i've read this year that made me cry and that would be sadie okay sadie made me cry okay i hope you're happy i hope you're happy sadie i hope you're happy because you were sad and you made tears fall from my eyes what this book about is it's about a podcast like this entire book is basically just the transcripts of a podcast that is uh it's like a season and a season deep dives into a true crime thing and this true crime thing is into the disappearance of sadie following the murder of her sister maddie okay and so we go into it there's interviews there's yeah there's interviews there's it's the podcast i don't know what to tell you it's the podcast it's, it's the podcast and i listened to it so it was literally just like it's a podcast like you know what I mean? Like, where's Sadie gone? What happened to Sadie? And also, what happened to her sister Maddie before she disappeared? And it was just sad. Like, it was sad. 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 Like, there's nothing else to tell you. Like, I could, I can tell you why it's sad. It's in the trigger warnings. Definitely read the trigger warnings if you're going to read this book. Okay? Because I didn't. And it needs triggering. It needs trigger warnings. Because it is triggering. They tell you it's sad. But, like, I think it's going to be sad. And I don't know. I guess if it's sad, does it have to be triggering? I guess, kind of. But it's triggering like it's just as i said murdered and disappeared teen girls like it's not great for us you know it's not great i do feel like it was appropriate though it was appropriately sad i feel like it was handled deftly is that the right word d-e-f-t-l-y deftly anyway it was handled with care and i appreciate that but yeah i did cry so happy happy for sadie okay Anyway, a book that made me happy. Don't know where all this shade is coming from. We just have to, we just have to move on. A book that made me happy. To counteract that, I went and got it specifically. Pumpkin heads, pumpkin heads. Yeah, this book. So these past two books were for Summerween. So if you watch my Summerween daily vlog, then you will have seen both of these books. So there is a bit of a recent bias. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't think that's the word for it, but like the bias because I've just recently read them, so they're further up in my brain. This book made me happy. It says, it says, it says. Pumpkin Hits. It's a graphic novel by Rainbow Rowell and Faith Erin Hicks. And it follows these two people here. Um, and every year they work at a pumpkin patch around Halloween. And this follows their final year at the pumpkin patch before they go off to university. And it follows them over this one night and their friendship. I don't know. It was just so cute. It was just so cute, wholesome. But also there was some unexpected representation in there, specifically from this girl i loved it so much it was just happy that's why i said it was just cute happy vibes i don't want to tell you too much but like if you like a specific trope you're gonna love this you're gonna love this question 11 is a beautiful book this year that you bought so i've bought many books whilst i wasn't on this here youtube specifically booktube um and yeah some of which i'm gonna show to you um in vlogs but some of which you're just you're never gonna see you're never gonna see 
so I'm going to try and show you those ones. So a book that I've bought this year is this one. And this is, I don't know, the cloth bound edition of Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I like these editions. But I love this one. Like, I think it's the hearts. I think it's the hearts for me. It's just pretty. Like, and it's like, it reflects the book to me. Um, And yeah, as I said, it's cloth bound. It's got the string i've only now it's not gonna become a thing where i collect these i don't think like don't hold me to it but i just don't think i'm gonna collect them i think i'm gonna collect the ones that i love maybe like a special edition of the books that i love and i love frankenstein um i did my a-level english about frankenstein i like i really like it and then number 12 is some books that i want to read by the end of the year and specifically there's one book which is again gonna be about a vlog that is upcoming but it's also upcoming for me because i haven't read it yet a book that i want to read by the end of this year is a book in a genre again one that i've just spoken about that i haven't read much this year i haven't read much classics in fact i say much i haven't read a single classic this year and that that's fine but i can't i consider myself a varied reader that might be a lie but i feel like it in my soul and so i've got an event also coming up that's related to this book and so the classic that i want to read is macbeth now i've read macbeth before i enjoyed it then i just i don't know if i went into enough detail though so i'm gonna try and read that and i should try and read that soon another book that i want to read before the end of the year is this book i'm gonna get it wearing my mother's hearts because i was bloody reading this with chatty before i promptly disappeared off the face of the planet yeah i don't know i'm also i'm going to see her sophia thaka i am she's doing an event and i'm going to it it should be so fun but i want to read this before i go and there you are that's it i did watch a video and she did like shout outs at the end so i'm gonna do some shout outs to people that i watch all the time okay i feel to come here and apologize because it was late at night it was late at night my brain the the cogs were not cooking as it were like i was not putting oh gosh i was not putting two and two together and like i was just names i'm terrible with names as it is and so yeah i'm uh, i must apologize to all of the creators i'm about to name because listen i forget half of their names i do i'm really sorry it's just not my talent it's not my talent it's not my sport but like at the same time you know like it you should rep remember people's names you know what i mean it's a bit disrespectful so therefore apologies but i will put all of them on the screen as i'm talking so there we are People that I watch, I've watched a lot of booktube, let me be honest with you guys, I watch a lot of booktube. I have like my friends, like people who I interact with online, so that includes like Chatty, Daphne, Sam, some other people that I interact with are like books like Ashes, um, and I'm constantly in the description of Carver's channel as well. I'm sorry, I love her channel. But then I have like other people who I'm just a watcher, so we have, oh it's Bells, super into her. Beth's all booked. She hasn't really posted much, but whenever she does, I do love to see it. What else do we have? These are just people that I'm currently, like, obsessed with because there's many people. Oh, I um, love Becca's, Becca in the books. Um, Gavin from How to Train Your Gavin. Oh, my gosh, Literary Diversions. Oh, I love Literary Diversions. And similarly, like, their whole Scottish crew, like, Jean's Bookish Thoughts. Is that her channel name? Oh, okay, Fantasy. Even though I don't really read much Fantasy, Fantasy, Cassidy cassidy's i'm really terrible with channel names so i could be messing up all these channel names but i'll be putting them on the screen cassidy i love her channel i religiously watch her videos even though i don't read fantasy so i don't can tell you that talking about fantasy i do like watching daniel green specifically his fantasy news again don't read fantasy why do i watch fantasy news i watch it every every week every friday come on now newer channels there's this newer channel that i watch i can't remember her name right now putting her on the screen talking about news actually um we have the book community um i love her and her channel and obviously she's got a new podcast out at the moment with Ma. is it with Ma? no it's not mm. but i really like mara i also really like jesse on youtube now that they've started posting again i also like locked petition and yeah there's just many other people there's many many other people should i have a scroll should we do a scroll? Let's have a scroll through my subscriptions. Um, and I'll put it on the screen here. Here's the scroll of people that I follow. Um, do 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 do. Follow all of these people. You can have a look. Yeah. Olivia's catastrophe. She was at a book event that I went to the other day, and I was like, I'm so sure I recognise you. And true, true, I did. Um, Rincey reads. Um, I've recently gotten into her actually. Really enjoying her channel. Um. 
do 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 i say i say i watch a lot of booktube i haven't watched much of most of these videos um beautifully bookish bethany a bookish realm oh my god i love bookish realm meg with books did i say meg with books meg with books is like one of my going to she's a thriller mystery babe okay i say thriller mystery but specifically mysteries and i love that representation okay because this i said there's not many of us but there are for example criminally he loves lots of crime stuff but like i don't know make with books she's just like she's just she's like me you know what i mean i just feel like we're both mystery babes so yeah i mean i could keep scrolling oh book roast there's so many people there's literally so many people i follow so many people on booktube just know i'm i'm constantly chronically chronically on booktube chronically okay so with that that's the end of this video okay i hope you enjoyed that i hope you enjoyed this i hope you enjoyed me just rambling about the books that i read this year okay i hope you liked that diversity and the effort i went into into not repeating books i hope you enjoyed that okay because i did try anyway yeah so that's how my year's been going i'm also going to do another video where it's like a yearly reflection uh reflection on the year so far and that's going to be talking about the goals that i set at the beginning of the year it's going to be looking at my digital journals and my digital and my spreadsheets there's going to be a bit of stats in there as well just all of that jazz like all of that good stuff that's what it's going to be in and yeah just a bit of a reflection on my channel so far this year follow along for that upcoming video that's linked to this video where we can have a look at some of the other books ever this year anyway i'll speak to you guys later bye bye Thank you.